Okay, so I thought that I could go over, uh, now that we explain what the line group work plots are and how they help us, the different line group work plots you're gonna see uh, for the different types of inhibitors we talked about a few videos ago, okay? So over here I drew out, over here I drew out uh, competitive, uncompetitive, mixed and non-competitive inhibitors and how their plots would change by adding those respective inhibitors, okay? So minus I, means that you didn't add an inhibitor plus i means that you have the inhibitor added so i'm just going to annotate this in case so this is with inhibitor okay and then this is without inhibitor okay so i want you guys to again look at the the the, the two key areas that you're gonna take from the Lyme group Burke plot are your X and Y intercepts because those are gonna tell us what's happening to our KM and our Vmax, okay? So look over here, remember, we said that the Y intercept is going to be one over Vmax, and then our X intercept is going to be negative one over KM, and then this is going to be another negative one over KM, but this is when you add the inhibitor, okay? so. Looking at this right over here, we're gonna see that our Vmax, well, if it goes through the same point, it means that you have the same Vmax value. So that means that when I added the inhibitor, the Vmax didn't change. But then when I added that inhibitor, remember we said that the values that get closer to the origin are larger, so we increased our KM, okay? So we increased our KM and we kept the Vmax the same. Well, let's just go back to that table we drew over here. Well, notice for competitive inhibitors, we keep the Vmax the same, and we also increase the Km, okay? So all of these curves, what they're gonna be showing you is exactly what this table is showing you. So for example, for uncompetitive inhibitors, right? For uncompetitive inhibitors, what did we say is gonna to happen to the Vmax and the Km? Well, if we go back over here, we saw that the Vmax decreased and the Km also decreased. Well, let's just see what happens over here. So the Vmax, over here it decreased and the KM also decreased. So all you're gonna be doing is, if you ever are confused, you can go back to the table and see what happens to the KM and the VMAX for different types of inhibitors. And you can see what type of inhibitor you have based on the plot that comes up when you draw it on your exam or on a study question, okay? So we're gonna be giving you guys data and you're gonna be plotting that data on these line over Berg plots. And based on the type of lines you draw, you should be able to tell if it's a competitive, uncompetitive, mixed or non-competitive inhibitor. I'm just gonna add a few extra details um, that I wanted to go over, okay? The first thing is, for if you ever drew an uncompetitive inhibitor on your curve for an exam, you have to make sure the first things first is that they are parallel, okay? This is gonna, I'm gonna explain why they're parallel in a different video, but make sure that you make, make sure that the lines are exactly parallel for them to be an uncompetitive inhibitor, okay? Same thing for competitive inhibitors, make sure that the Vmax is the same. For non-competitive, make sure that the KM is going to be the same. Now, I wanna add another detail. So we normally see our mixed inhibitors look something like this, where the KM is increasing and our Vmax is going to decrease by a tiny amount. Now, what I wanted to show you guys is, even though this is a correct example, there's actually two ways to draw a mixed inhibitor, okay? So if I drew this out, let me zoom out a little bit, okay? We're gonna zoom out over here and I'm gonna just draw another one, okay? So this is again minus I. So in the previous, and this, in the example that I drew over here, we're saying that the KM increased and we had a decrease in the Vmax, because notice how the Vmax is, it's going up over here and then we're also going this way to increase the KM, okay? Remember, we said that the, for mixed inhibitors, there's two things that can happen to the KM. The KM could either increase or decrease, right? If it binds better to the free enzyme versus, versus the ES complex. So going back over here, well, there's two ways we can then draw a mixed inhibitor. We can either draw it like this where the KM increases, right? Or what we could also do is instead draw it where the KM decreases, okay? So something like this. So, Notice how the KM is decreasing in this case because we're moving to the left. And then notice how the Vmax is also decreasing in this case because we're moving up. But now I wanna add another idea. Well, remember we said that for uncompetitive inhibitors, they kind of, they never intersected, right? Notice how over here, that these are never gonna intersect because they're parallel. Notice how over here, they're not intersecting where you can see it. 
but you might be confused and say, oh yeah, this kind of looks like a parallel line and it might be uncompetitive. The reason why I'm saying that you have to make sure it's parallel for uncompetitive is notice how for this one, if you continue drawing the lines, they intersect in a different quadrant. So they're still not fully parallel. So that's why it's very, and this is a mixed inhibitor. So this is another example of mix. So that's why it's very important to draw out your curves correctly because if you're off by a little bit, one line might look like it's parallel, but it's not exactly parallel. And then that's the difference between a mixed and an uncompetitive inhibitor. So make sure you draw your lines correctly and I'll go over the formulas in the next video.